Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much again to NLB and giving SUSS this opportunity to share in this important celebration of our seniors um, in, you know, in this uh, challenging time of COVID. And uh, there's light in the tunnel. Uh, and this light is technology. And I think uh, in Singapore, uh, we have quite a lot of uh, interesting landscape shifting uh, in a positive direction, as well as opportunities that are created of this uh, changing landscape. So I would use uh, the next uh, 15 minutes or so to share with you um, what uh, I've been doing over the last eight years uh, in the startup scene, working with different ecosystem players uh, to bring these opportunities to fruition together with them. Right. So um, this is my agenda. I'll talk a bit about the Smart Nation Initiative that started in 2014, the startup ecosystem, some of the key stakeholders, activities that uh, were initiated and are ongoing to push forward this whole you know, change that we can do with technology, uh, some of the innovative startups. Of course, you know, today we have lined up quite a number of interesting startups, not just from Singapore, but from other countries. They, they will give a bit more in depth into their journey. And finally, how are we building communities for seniors? Um, I think uh, most of you all would have heard of uh, the Smart Nation Initiative. There is a office uh, that uh, drive this for Singapore. And this is very important because from uh, 2014 till now, in the span of six years, there has been a lot of uh, interesting proof of concept and proof of trials going on in different parts of the island. So this landscape itself shows you that the educational uh, players like SUSS uh, one of uh, the talent feeds to this whole initiative. And there is uh, also the healthcare, the smart cities, the transport, the logistics, as well as safety and security. Now, I think looking at Singapore, why it's so attractive, why you know, we are pushing this forward is because of the whole digitization plan. And digital health is one not just a key word, but it's also a key vision for us because we are going digital in payment, we are going digital in the delivery of health services. And in this whole scheme of things in digitization, we need to have support of a conducive environment. And this particular report from Startup Genome shows that in digital health, we do have very healthy players from the early stage funding uh, to the global ecosystem players and also our MES Monetary Authority of Singapore is also pushing this to ensure that there's enough money from VCs coming to here to push and support this, right? And as a country, I think uh, even, you know, we are facing the challenges of COVID, Singapore should continue to provide the ease of doing business, uh, the financial assistance, which I'll talk a bit about later, and also what we call the COVID-19 policy, such that the startups, the SMEs can ride through this storm and create intellectual properties that are truly Singapore. Or if not, we could also partner with uh, uh, overseas uh, startup and innovative ideas to make things happen, all right? The startup ecosystem uh, from this particular landscape chart shows many different players. And this is good because it shows a very healthy and rich environment where we can have spaces, we can have accelerators, we can have VCs. We also have importantly, the government agencies like Enterprise Singapore ESG and also educational players to fit this whole mosaic of jigsaw puzzle together, right? So to create an ecosystem requires different stakeholders uh, from the start of an idea, uh, to grow the idea, to turn out entrepreneurs who never say die uh, and never want to fail because they are perseverance enough. Um, and then they can pitch to bring in uh, the you know, investors and mentors into their company to grow and scale the business right so technology players 
are also very important in this whole you know, landscape because companies like Cisco, Microsoft, Ericsson, or even Tencent of China have uh, been very supportive of a startup. And uh, in healthcare, we don't want to just have high tech, we want to have high touch because the humanization of technology is very important to ensure that the seniors feel that there's a warmth to it. It's not just a cold, hot, you know, cold connection, but also a hot connection, which means there's emotional interaction happening. And uh, some startups feel that, you know, it may be difficult to get early stage support from VCs. So we do have crowdfunding players. And I think if you look at Kickstarter funded here, Indiegogo, et cetera, you realize that there's opportunity to put up your good idea into this platform and canvas for support from, you know, small private funds or maybe just individuals like you and me who would like to fund for good, right? Um, and I mentioned about Accelerator. I'll just bring up one of the examples here, Catalyst. Um, this is an interesting medical and healthcare technology ecosystem player. They create a space right at SGH. And in this space itself, the alumni house for the uh, medical associations is turned into co-working space so that the doctors and nurses can interact with uh, anyone who wants to start idea with them. And you know, incubate and uh, take that idea further through their connections and network. There is also a accelerator program called Modern Aging, which I've driven for the last six years. It is a community accelerator. A community accelerator means what? We bring in practitioners from the healthcare and senior sector to be in this community to solve problems together and we will then profile them uh, to industrial experts or mentors to develop a more comprehensive business education solution for them. And SUSS just launched uh, the Venture Builder and Training Program. This particular uh, program itself, um, you know, as this EDM shows, is an example of uh, how the alumni and students can get very involved uh, with ideas that our students who are doing who are, or have completed the masters in gerontology can take their you know, passion further with support from uh, SUSS. So there are other competitions and round table exhibitions that is happening you know, this month, for example, Aging Asia, you can check it out, their competition. And uh, sometimes we also encourage uh, projects that students you know, do uh, in validating their ideas with different nursing home players like AWA, or even uh, Sports SG, which has been encouraging active aging uh, in the form of exercises uh, for seniors. And how about corporates? I think this is important because the corporates like Procter & Gamble, Danone, Mundi Pharma, Bayer, et cetera, they represent how the commercial market can be part of this whole ecosystem to package it, to bring the industry mentor to the room. I'm going to share with you some examples of technology trials and implementation. This is one about six years ago. It's called the SARS project. This project was set up to help the tele rehab of stroke patients. And it's a, it's a project that turned into a commercial idea right here in Singapore. We have other ones that uh, has also made very good headlines in terms of getting investments like Jagami or Homage. Uh, and this platform helps to connect uh, the different resources in terms of caregivers, nurses, or therapists with seniors for family to get respite so that uh, you know, they don't feel stressed out managing some of these uh, challenging uh, unknown uh, territories to them. Uh, we also have um, uh, promoted startups uh, from the Modern Aging Program to help with, for example, diabetes care, management, uh, you know, wearing this shoe, for instance, will detect uh, the sensitive and hot spots where ulcers are developed uh, so that, you know, from a mobile app, you won't be putting too much pressure on this ulcer. And it's done by a company called Sexosense. 
Fall detection is another example. Seniors, most often when they are not careful, they fall down, it injured their hip, uh, it uh, incapacitated them and their independence is a factor. So we have fall detection devices from sound eye. We also have medicine reminder because sometimes as we get older or we get too busy, we forget to take our medication or if we take, we take the wrong one. So this company called Pilpresso has done something uh, around medication adherence uh, through that smart device. Um, and for more sophisticated solutions from uh, a company in Taiwan, you know, called Singular Wings, they uh, have a device that could detect you know, the heart uh, beats and give you the vital signs remotely, right? Uh, from Hong Kong, you know, later Samuel will share what he's doing, but from Hong Kong, University of Hong Kong, they have created a immersive experience where you don't have to wear a virtual reality glass to you know, travel and teleport to different environments to exercise, to enjoy, you know, what COVID has uh, affected you in terms of travel and social distancing. And also we are seeing social robots becoming companions uh, to our seniors. Uh, and these are just a plethora of some of the robots that are in, a, in the commercial world now. Um, and I just like to bring up dementia because um, in dementia, you know, the, the seniors can feel very uh, lonely from social isolation. And this is really an example of how the robot become a very good companion to seniors so that they don't feel uh, lonely, they don't feel dejected, and uh, at the same time, you know, their quality of life is maintained. So we do different kind of research to help out with the seniors uh, from pets, from uh, non-pets, because Paro, for example, is one of the popular, you know, CCUs uh, that's used to help with the seniors, right? And my last few like, slides is just to show you that uh, you know, in the whole scheme of things, uh, we want to bring people and community together because it's not just about technologies and robots. It's also how the neighbors that is in the vicinity uh, around the seniors uh, living and active living could actually create that friendly community with each other. So this is an example of uh, something done in uh, Japan. We are working, we are discussing with them we are understanding, you know, uh, for example, what it takes to make home truly a home that they feel and enjoy uh, as a senior, right? So I'll end my presentation uh, with uh, this particular uh, view from a Basho program that seniors are truly the valuable assets of our community. The life experiences and wisdom uh, will benefit many generations and create better intergeneration relationships to, re to withstand huh, the resilience of uh, COVID and all the challenges we're facing. So with that, I'll pass the floor back to HP. Thank you. Uh, thanks so much for the sharing, uh, Kevin. Um, can everybody see my screen now? It's good. Okay. So. Thanks so much. Singapore is uh, definitely rated highly as a country for startup uh, to start their business in. Uh, this is mainly due to the government smart nation initiative and also the conceive, uh, conducive uh, ecosystem, especially the availability of uh, funding, generous funding uh, like ventures, you know, private equity, you know, in Singapore. Uh, Singapore, despite its small market, uh, it can play a very important role as test bait has paid for startups to try out the solution before scaling up regionally. So up next, uh, uh, allow me to uh, invite Ms. Ku uh, to share uh, the Japan uh, drone technology landscape and uh, opportunity. Ms. Ku. Thank you, HB. Um, just give me some time to get my presentation up. No worries, let okay. me... Yes, can you see my screen? Uh, yes. Okay. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am actually Kiwai from Jetro. 
So um, JetRoll is actually Japan External Trade Organization, and we are a government-related organization in Japan um, that's focused to promote the mutual trade between Japan and the rest of the world. So we have actually 74 overseas offices in 54 countries, as well as offices, domestic offices covering all the cities and prefectures in Japan. And we have actually an office in Singapore. So um, as a government body, I will be actually talking about a, a general overview about how the German technology market is and what are the opportunities there in the market. So to start with, um, what is the current situation and the future projections? As everyone has probably know that um, Japan is actually the top nation with the aging population. And with the latest uh, figures, as I said, that 28.4% of the population is 65 and above. And this has also been projected that in 2065, there about 2.6 person to one is actually an elderly of 65 and above. So um, some other uh, further uh, detailed information is that among this 28.4%, um, there is actually 14.7%, um, which is 75 and above. And also um, this 28.4%, there is 21% approximately uh, are living Ms. alone. Goose? Yes? Ms. Goose, sorry, uh, we cannot see you. Yeah? Your, your video oh, is not on. Okay. Yeah. We, only, we, okay. we, saw, we see your screen, but we, we can't see your face. Okay, let uh -huh. me see what is happening now. I did. Okay. Something happening. Um, okay, can you see me? Uh, let me just check. Let me uh -huh. try to... Yes, now I can see you. Again. Yes, yeah, you can see me, but you cannot see my screen. Uh, you did you share now? Have you shared your screen? Um, let me see my screen again. Yes. Um. Okay. It's not appearing again in the screen. Hmm. Something happening. Okay. Um, Are you sharing or... not... um, I cannot own the share video. I don't know why. I, I think it's okay. No, then you just share your slide and then we continue from there. That's okay. Okay, sure. Yes. Can you still see the screen? Uh, no. Okay, let me see. I will try to do it again. Apology for that. Okay, yes, it's better uh, now. Back. Okay, yeah, yeah. but can you see my face? No. No. <laughs> but it's okay. yeah. Fine, yeah, you don't have to see my face. You just <laughs> listen to me then. Okay. Okay. Okay, so um, as I've mentioned, about 21% lives alone in Japan. So um, why am I emphasizing the 75 and the birth is that in Japan, under the government policy, um, they have actually grouped the elderly into two groups. So the 65 to 74 are the normal elderly people, and there's the advanced elderly, which is 75 and above. And there is, um, as many know, that Japan is a very heavy subsidized uh, medical insurance for the elderly. So there is actually a difference in the subsidies that is provided to do these two groups. So which means that the market itself is actually being separated into two markets as well. And um, later when I introduce the, you see that the technologies available in the market are actually emphasized in these two different markets as well. And one interesting point to know is that um, in Japan, uh, in the latest uh, statistic is that hundred um, there is actually about 80,000 um, people population which is 100 years old and above so when you actually make it as an example so it's like the sports stadium in Japan so it's about 1.6 times of a sports stadium in Japan so meaning that this is really a very growing population in Japan and also um, giving a, a great burden on the medical uh, or the pension um, insurance 
So, and also in the additional, the main reasons for the nursing care, which is 65 and above. So, it is also similar to what Singapore is facing. The dementia is actually one of the highest uh, illness that is actually been identified for the elderly in Japan, and which is about 18.7%. And this are actually the percentage for females and males, where females is actually a bit higher. For the percentage, and also in the future, it is also projected that this percentage will be actually having another ten percent increase, where um, um, you will see that. Um, so this is this will actually um, affect a lot on the technology or the uh, that will be um, created for the market itself. So in two thousand twenty-five, um, you will see that now is about twenty percent of the. Mm -hmm. Um, the population that is having dementia projected, which is about five person to one, and then in 2060, it's almost about three person to one. So this is actually quite a serious uh, problem that we'll be facing in Japan. So where are or what you see about this senior consumer market? So when you actually talk about technology, the first thing probably you will be thinking about is about the internet usage or the network that is available. So there is actually, uh, the, um, by the survey that is created, um, uh, conducted in Japan, the usage of internet is actually increasing for the aging population and also uh, at least about 57% that is um, of the aging population is using the internet at least once a day. So this will actually create more market opportunities for the market itself. And also it is actually projected that the expenditure of the people that is 60 years and above is increasing. And by 2030, you see that almost about 50% of the population is actually uh, done by the uh, senior market. And this is the um, comparison of the expenditure of households uh, in 2017 compared to the normal household with uh, people that is uh, lower than 65. So. Um, you will see that the, um, the population that is 65 and above are actually spending a lot more on healthcare, and it's about 1.69 times. So this is actually a growing market in Japan. So um, what are actually the, uh, the opportunities in the Jiron technology in Japan? So first thing probably you have to know about uh, the market is that there will be actually two groups in Japan where I've mentioned that um, the 65 and above and the 75 and above. So there are those that are young elderly who are still healthy and probably just um, retire from the work or still working as part time. Um, so they are actually very active and looking for um, things that are different for this a second group where they are a bit more with illness. So they need more intensive nursing care. And so for the healthy group, this is more in looking things for lifestyle or education where they have more free time. So they will probably be looking at um, e-learning or something that they could learn after the work. And lifestyle, meaning that um, since they are retired, they will be looking for more technologies or products that are um, to increase the quality of their life. And of course, because um, they start to um, having problems in the illness, so these are also looking for applications or also products, uh, technologies that is a like prevention of illness for the future. So telecom uh, medicine or pre-illness applications actually comes in in this way, especially for the COVID. Since the COVID uh, situation, the government did relax on the regulations for telemedicine. So there are actually quite a lot of uh, new companies that are popping up in Japan for this particular area. And for the nursing care area, of course, everyone knows that uh, it will be heavily rely on the caregiver, the mobility of the elderly medical device, and as well as the facilities in Japan. As well, in many countries, we are still facing a, a, a huge problem in the decrease of caregivers and the facilities. So this is something that the the, um, the current society is looking at. And for both groups, you will see that both of uh, they are actually looking at the same uh, area where 
um, for food, uh, for example, like uh, for e-delivery for their food or certain technology that will help them for those uh, elderly who are not able to solo as much, as well as housing when they have more free time and lifestyle, they would like to create something that is better for the housing. And also lastly, um, last but not least, is for the communication, meaning that um, they since I have mentioned previously that many of them are living alone, so they will be looking for uh, technology things for the companionship as well as things that they could interact with the social or the people in the public. So let's go to the, when you see that the actual uh, products or the technologies that is available. So, but before I go there, um, this is, uh, as I've mentioned previously, the Japan market in this particular area is really heavily influenced by the government policy because um, Japan is a very heavy subsidized area um, in this particular area. So, and Japan the government has been always um, trying to uh, amend the policy to give a uh, a better uh, conditions for the elderly market or the growing aging market. And before that, they were more concentrating in the nursing care where they are more heavy medicated. But now, because of the growing numbers of healthy uh, group as well, so they are actually trying to amend the policy more to attention to the healthy group where to create them to have a better quality of life and also preventing them to go to the worst a scenario of having nursing care, which will release the burden on the insurance subsidies itself. So let's go for the products and technologies. In general, we could um, we could actually differentiate it into three categories. So the communication, interaction, the supportive and application. So in the communication and interaction part, I think many of you knows about all this um, particular uh, all these uh, products that's available. Um, I think the, the famous one are like Ibo by Sony or the Peril. Or so you will see that a lot of the major players in the IT, uh, the IT uh, big players are actually already in this market. And um, you could see that there are the hard ones where they are more in the communication, talking with the elderlies, and, and there are the, the soft type, which is um, you could hug them and feel for those lonely or living alone elderlies. And of course, there are also smaller players like what you see as a Fukusuke. This is uh, something that is um, interesting. So it's uh, also a reminder for the elderly to take their medication. So they actually communicate with the elderly and reminds them to take the medical, uh, the medicines. And then in the supportive area, so you will see that uh, a huge area where lots of people know that Japan is very advanced in this area for supporting of the caregivers, either at the medical facilities or um, supporting the elderly who are still at home but need the caregivers to be taken care of. And uh, also there are... Um, technologies that is present that is actually by the overall in the medical facilities or at home where due to the decrease in the number of caregivers you will need to actually overall a sensor to let the caregivers to understand what is happening in the facilities or at home or the elderly and also there are more simpler a home use a device where for especially for elderly who are starting to have dementia symptoms so they this is actually a device that is actually created for face recognition where they actually you pre-record the uh, the face or the people that they usually the elderly know and if there's something that uh, it's a stranger who came to the door uh, where it's not recorded this information will be sent directly to the family uh, to to alert them to know that there's someone actually at the door, and of course there are also a area a large area in the, um, the the normal home appliances where, for example, by Panasonic, the uh, for elderly who are not able to swallow as a good, so this is actually a food softener appliance where they could use, and also. Recently, for the recent year, Japan, the um, the temperature in summer season is getting really hot and there were a lot of cases where the elderly were not able to adjust to the temperature or they didn't realize and uh, there were quite a lot of death case for that. And so this is some simple uh, home appliances with sensor where they could actually adjust by itself. And lastly, for last but not least, for the application. So it can be also casual for simple 
um, recording of the for the elderly about their pleasure, um, blood pressure, or the medical uh, medication that they are taking, or some games for them to train the brain to prevent in uh, for dementia. Or it can be something that is really connected to companies where um, insurance company who are providing. Um, insurance for dementia prevention. So this is actually the applications they are providing to their patients or to their customers. So being said this is that um, the market itself is a very big market, but it is also, as I've mentioned previously, is very heavily um, um, influenced by the government policy as well that um, it's actually moving on to the next stage where because it's already a very matured market. So meaning that it's no longer a single application or a single product that is coming to, but they are going to the area of sharing the same platform or how, or how to make use of the data that is being actually collected by this or all the single uh, products and then making them to a platform for commercial use or for data analysis use. For example, Pepperell by um, MEC, it's, they have actually connected for different applications or different um, government bodies for actual applications or government applications. So they have been starting to work with even startups in Japan or overseas to, to um, join, to combine this, to have a common platform. So um, last for me, to, before I end my presentation, so it's just actually a simple um, advertisement by Jetro. So um, Jetro, we actually have support services for the startups who are actually interested in the Japan market. So since um, 2003, we have been supporting foreign companies to enter the market in the investment Japan area. And then since 2019, we have um, starting to focus or expand our focus in more in the innovative startups that are providing good innovations that will benefit the Japan economy. And the general um, services um, that we are providing includes um, the com consultation services for doing business in Japan. So meaning that um, all the consultations or information providing to the setting up in Japan in the in terms of law, in terms of HR, in terms of taxation. So this will be all provided free for the companies that we're supporting. And we also have temporary business office spaces that's available free for the companies who are actually exploring the market in six major cities in, in Japan. And for business opportunities, we um, created, um, we have um, interaction opportunities or events opportunities for the companies in Japan, as well as um, we have also been supporting Japan corporates who are doing open innovation in Japan and outside Japan. And by matching the foreign startups um, um, solutions to match what they have or uh, what other problem statement they have in for the market. And last but not least, we are also um, further expand, um, supporting the companies who are thinking to expand in Japan. So lots of people only know about the major cities, but actually there are lots more um, opportunities also in the outskirts of the major cities, as well as incentive um, and other acceleration programs that is already um, provided for companies who are interested in Japan as well. So um, we do not, I'm running out of time. So um, if you want to know more about uh, what Jetro do and how we could support you, feel free to contact us. And with this, I'll end my presentation for today. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for sharing, uh, Ms. Ku. Uh, uh, Japan is definitely a huge uh, market for gerontology, you know, germ uh, technology due to its uh, huge aging population. However, like what Ms. Ku mentioned, it is also you know, a complex uh, market, uh, also a mature market. And without uh, local knowledge, uh, you know, I think it will be quite uh, challenging for any startup uh, to participate in the Japan market. Uh, for anyone who wants to explore the Japanese general technology uh, market opportunity, either bringing in the Japanese technology into our home market or to export our innovative solution into the, the Japanese uh, elder care sector, we can always contact Ms. Ku. Uh, I'm sure Ms. Ku will be able to provide us with uh, more insights and also guidance on you know, how to be successful in the Japanese market. 
once again, thanks a lot, Ms. Ku. Uh, Thank you, HP. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, we have Professor Shi uh, to share with us uh, um, on the two topics. The first topic is the Taiwan drone technology landscape and uh, opportunity, and also his startup uh, experience in the Sita uh, G Tech. Uh, Prof Shi? Yep, I'm, I'm online, yes. Okay. Uh, but uh, will you share that uh, pre record video? All right, I will do so. Yeah, right, yeah. So uh, then I'll go ahead to show, uh, share the video of a Prof. Shi presentation. Uh, just on. Uh, hi, Prof. Shi. Hi. So I'll share the video. Uh, okay. Uh, yes. Can everybody see the screen? Mm, yes. Uh, uh, you, will you switch back to that screen? Is that okay? No, no. Th this is this is live. This is me. So, uh, do you want to share that uh, video from your side? Yes, yes. Just give me a second. Just give me a second. Just give me a second. Sorry for the. It cups. Uh, let me just go back. Uh, let me just uh, share again. Uh, computer. Okay, from uh, now I share. Good. Good morning. My name is Ye Liang Xu. I'm a professor in mechanical engineering department of Yunzi University in Taiwan. I'm also the director of Jiren Technology Research Center of the same university. Currently, I'm the editor-in-chief of Jiren Technology, the official journal of the International Society for Jiren Technology. It is my great pleasure and honor to be able to speak to you in this time of your life celebration 2020, organized by Singapore National Library Board in collaboration with Singapore University of Social Sciences. In addition to my academic positions, I'm also the CEO of this startup company, Seda G Tech. In this company, we try to convert the successful research and development in our research center into real commercial products. In this presentation, I'm also going to share with you some of that startup experience in Taiwan. Let me start with some demographics of Taiwan. We are now facing simultaneous impacts of aging boom and baby bust. Taiwan became an aged society, population 65 years or older exceeded 14% in 2018. Taiwan is expected to become a super aged society, population 65 years or older exceeds 20% by 2025. It takes only 7 years. Currently, the population 65 years or older is 15.79% or 3.72 million. The average life expectancy grew from about 53 for men and 56 for women in 1950 when we first had these statistics in Taiwan to about 78 for men and 85 for women in 2019, an increase of almost 30 years. Moreover, life expectancy at age 65 is about 19 years for men and 22 years for women in 2019. The needs of older adults change greatly with this extended life expectancy after retirement. The society is aging very fast. In the meantime, Taiwan's total fertility rate of 1.218 is the lowest in the world, according to the World Population Review 2020. Singapore is at 1.26, which is also very low. Taiwan's aging index, the ratio of population 65 or older to population younger than 15 years old, is 125. Taiwan reached almost zero natural population growth in 2019. One critical reason for the very low fertility rate is that the average age of the first-time mothers in Taiwan is 30.9 years old in 2019. This is the second oldest in the world according only to Italy at 31.1. 
22.3% of the first-time mothers were older than 35. Facing widespread population aging, people naturally consider applying technologies for the care of older adults. With the rapid change in demographics, the priority is not to develop high-end technologies or products for the future, but to implement existing technological products in daily application now. With the extended life expectancy after retirement, technology should be used not only to support long-term care, but also to enhance the physical and cognitive wellness of healthy older adults to prolong their independent, healthy life expectancy. Facing the simultaneous impacts of aging boom and baby bust, the strategy is to use technology to support the caregivers who may have better technology acceptance to reduce their care burden and improve the quality of care. After all, caregivers are often the ones who purchase the technological products. Informal caregivers may be able to stay at their job positions while taking care of the older adults at home with the help of technology. In that regard, technology could also have a chance to provide the economic drive to the society and to the industry. I often tell people that there are three G's, three very important fields for the aged society. The first two G's are gerontology and geriatrics. I'm sure that you are very familiar with these two words already. However, I think the third G, gerontology, technology, is even more closely related to the older adults, caregivers, and the technology industry. This word gerontology technology was first defined in the first International Congress on Gerontology Technology in 1991 in Andoven, the Netherlands. The International Society for Gerontology Technology, ISG, was later established in 1997. Many people ask me, you are a mechanical engineer, why are you in the field of gerontology?" technology? My answer is always, I am an engineering designer. Engine technology is about designing for people. This is the definition of gerontology technology by the ISG. Design technology and environment. The first word is design. The purpose of the design is the independent living and social participation of older persons in good health, comfort, and safety. The scope of germ technology is a very broad one. Health, housing, mobility, communication, leisure, and work. No matter what your field of expertise is, I'm sure that you can find an area in germ technology that you can contribute. These are also the scope of germ technology, the journal. For our journal, we never classify papers according to technical areas such as sensors, robotics, IoT, AI, and so on. We classify the papers according to health, housing, mobility, communication, leisure, and work, the purposes of the technology, the needs of the older adults. After all, germ technology is not about technology. Germ technology is about designing for people. The Jiren Technology Research Center of Yuanzi University, Taiwan, was first established in 2003. We are the pioneering university in the field of Jiren Technology in Taiwan. As a research center, our core is the research and development of smart living IoT products with applications in Jiren Technology. As a university, we also support the YZUD School, Design School in Jiren Technology where we do transdisciplinary learning. Our research center supports two journals, Jiren Technology, the official journal of the ISG, and another journal in Chinese. We have done many industry academia collaboration projects. In 2016, we moved one step forward to establish a startup company, Sedaji Tech, trying to turn the research and development into commercial products. We believe that germ technology is only valuable if we can bring research to daily applications. In the startup company, we take a design approach to germ technology, extending from creativity and prototypes in the university and to products, 
What is very difficult for us is turning the products into sales. With that intention of selling the products, we truly care about our target users, their needs, and the values our products can bring to them. For us, that is the full design cycle. The mission of the Joint Technology Research Center is to carry out a successful industrial and educational experiment. As the editor-in-chief of the journal Jiren Technology, I have to tell you that this is a very special journal. This is probably the only journal in the academic world that focuses on how to apply technology to help with the various problems of the aged society and the needs of the older adults. Many people ask me what exactly do people do in Jiren Technology? So I did a small research. I became the editor-in-chief of Germ Technology in 2017. This is my unscientific classification of the 86 papers published in Germ Technology from 2017 to 2020. The average number of downloads per paper was 235, collected on October 9th. These 86 papers can be classified into six categories. The first category is monitoring of vital science behavior patterns and platforms for health management. 18 papers, 205 downloads. The second category is technology assistance for everyday lives for older adults and caregivers. 18 papers, 243 downloads. The third category is platforms for social communication and participation of older adults. 10 papers, 243 downloads. The fourth category is technology intervention for enhancing physical and cognitive ability of older adults. 13 papers and the number of downloads 259 is the highest among the six categories. The fifth category is robust for senior care. Four papers, 224 downloads. The sixth category is general non-technical issues about gene technology, such as design methodology, education, culture, business, policy, and so on. 23 papers, 238 downloads. To my surprise, there were only four papers published in the past four years in June Technology about robust for senior care. Instead of designing and building one physical robot for senior care, the whole IoT environment with sensors, actuators, and cloud servers can be the robot. That is what the first three categories in June Technology do, building ambient intelligence, which means everyday environments that are sensitive and responsive to the presence of human to support older adults and caregivers. The physical robot itself is just a user interface for older adults and caregivers with the ambient intelligence. Let me show you some ambient intelligence applications we have been developing in our research center. This figure shows a typical telehealth system. The patients measure vital signs such as EKG, blood pressure, body weight, and so on at home. The measurement is then transmitted through this gateway to the server and the cloud. Telehealth systems are often used to connect patients with medical doctors and professional caregivers who read the measurement and take necessary actions. This figure shows a telehealth system based on the simple Bluetooth IoT gateway with Connect we developed in our research center. Instead of connecting patients with medical doctors and professional caregivers, this system connects older adults with children and family members. Here, I want to introduce to you an old lady who is very famous in the field of germ technology in Taiwan, Mother Xu, my mother. Mother Xu is 83 years old. She lives along in central Taiwan. My elder brother lives in Singapore. My elder sister used to live in China. My younger sister lives in the United States. I live in Taipei, about a two hour drive from her. Mother Xu has diabetes. She should measure her blood pressure and blood glucose every day. But like many other older adults, she did not want to do this. A few years ago, I installed four risk nets in her home. 
one in the living room, one in the dining room, one in the bedroom, and one in the toilet. Mother she has a blood pressure blood glucose meter with Bluetooth. So I asked her to measure her blood pressure blood glucose in the morning. After the measurement, she does not have to do anything but just leave the machine on. WISCONNECT will scan for the new measurements and transmit it automatically to the IoT cloud. I will then receive her measurements on my mobile phone app. I also bought a room temperature and humidity sensor and a wearable device for her, both with Bluetooth and can be easily added into the platform. This figure shows the blood pressure blood glucose measurements I receive every morning on my mobile phone. Other data such as her current location transmitted by her Bluetooth wearable device and her room temperature and humidity are also displayed on the app on my mobile phone. I am so used to receiving those measurements every morning. If I don't receive them one day, I will call Mother Shi to check out if she is okay. If the measurement is abnormal, like in this figure, the blood glucose 183 is high. And I will also call her to check on her diet. With the location data transmitted by her wearable device, I can also check out her life pattern. This figure shows that Mother Shi got up around 7 a.m., went to the toilet, went to the dining room for breakfast, and then sat in the living room the whole morning. She had lunch in the dining room around 11 a.m., sat in the living room the entire afternoon, probably watching TV, went to bed early around 7 p.m., went to the toilet once during the night. Now, Mother Shi measures her blood pressure, blood glucose regularly every morning after I install the WISCONNECT. But I would say the sun is the trigger to enable her behavior. I have a good understanding of, of her health and life pattern. These measurements has become a major part of our conversation. This simple and almost free telehealth system supports the older adults and supports me, the caregiver. It provides care, interaction, connection in addition to health monitoring. This figure shows the complete IT structure of our ambient intelligence platform. This platform has been evolving. The target users are the older adults and the children, family members, and caregivers in the homes. So we have been very careful in selecting smart technologies that belong to the homes, not necessarily high-end technologies. In 2015, we decided to move to IoT. In 2017, we started to develop Narrowband IoT or MB IoT products that connect directly to the mobile phone base station so that our products can be easily installed and used in the homes without using Wi-Fi. In 2019, we started to implement machine learning or AI into our products. Bluetooth and mobile devices are the two most commonly used technologies by the home users. So we certainly have to utilize them. As you can see, the center of the platform is WISCONNECT, the Bluetooth IoT gateway I put in Mother Xi's house. WISCONNECT transmits the data from Bluetooth devices to the IoT cloud. The home users can purchase the many commercial healthcare products with Bluetooth, such as blood pressure and blood glucose meter, or the temperature humidity sensors, and add them to the IoT ecosystem. We also develop our own products such as matrix, floor mat, chair cushion, which are familiar to the home users, and turn them into IoT products. We implement Edge AI algorithms on the chip embedded in the products for event identification. We use Amazon IoT service and implement AI algorithms for pattern recognition such as sleep monitoring and life pattern recognition in the cloud. Let me show you another application example in the hospital, implementing machine learning. This photo shows WISPAD, which is an extremely comfortable matrix made by pressure relief material for the prevention of pressure ulcers. 
We also implement machine learning to capture the intention of the patient leaving the bed, trying to prevent hospital falls. Let me show you a video of how this works in the hospital. Baby, what are you doing? Turn the camera to the high risk hospital room. The patient is afraid of falling down the stairs. But since we have this device, the patient is sitting there. The situation 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 is sitting there. 是，关键其实是在病房内这一张智慧床垫布满感应装置，同样及时传输电脑甚至手机 App， 记者直接现场实测。起床离床，手机就可以及时的告诉我，我的病人已经在做离床的状态，我必须要赶快过去。而且呢，可以得到很多好的照顾的讯息。那未来我们可以知道说，啊，照护员有没有准时的帮这些卧床的长辈做翻身等等。Wispad is capable of motion sensing with 30 sensing areas. We use machine learning to classify the sleep postures into lying in the bed, sitting up on the bed, sitting at the left edge of the bed, and sitting at the right edge of the bed. The neural network model is then deployed on the chip in the control box of Wispad. Then our system can provide the so-called three-stage leaf bed alert. For patients with high risk of falling, WISPAT sends the first alert to the nursing station or a mobile phone carried by a nurse when the patient sits up on the bed. Second alert when the patient sits at the edge of the bed and third alert when the patient leaves the bed. Currently, we are also working on cloud AI algorithms for WISPAT for living pattern recognition and for sleep quality monitoring. Finally, let's discuss the last category in June technology, technology interventions for enhancing physical and cognitive ability. This category actually came from the non-pharmacological intervention for preventing cognitive decline in older adults, namely preventing from dementia. While many non-drug treatments in dementia focus on cognitive training, research shows that physical activity or PA can improve cognitive function at older age. In a meta-analysis of 41 studies, combined PA plus CA cognitive activity intervention show significantly larger gains in cognition relative to the control groups. The activities designed for older adults should combine physical exercise with cognitive training. OK, exercise is very good but older adults may not want to do it. This photo shows Mother Xu, my mother, again. She has a new problem. She knows she has to exercise more, but riding this bicycle alone at home is simply too boring. This video shows a group of grandmas play our product with toys inside a temple, where they meet and chat every day. Wish toys can be easily assembled into different shapes with different apps. Older adults can play many games. Basically, we want to combine physical activities with cognitive activities plus some fun technology. <laughs> With the play principle of play comes first, serious gaming methodology is often used to design activities such as chasing game, matching game, chair exercise, and so on. Older adults should feel like they are playing, having fun with their friends, rather than doing training or rehabilitation. Older adults actually do not go to the gym to exercise, so we want to be able to bring the so-called gym technology gym to the older adults, to where they live and gather, and to create that peer encouragement. With toys capture the player's step and display motion on the screen. Player then perform physical activities guided by the screen. In this case, step on the cockroaches that pop up. There are many such interactive games for physical activities guided by the screen, such as Wii, Kinect, and Switch, though the games are mostly designed for younger players. 
it is difficult for some older adults to interact with the screen. Another type of interactive games guides the players to go through the physical and cognitive activities with lights and sounds, such as Blaze Pad, Triax Pad, Old Plate Soda, and the Stemma product model tiles. The older adults interact directly with the devices. We also developed one such product we call Wish Touch Game. You can see that the grandma play the with touch game with each other rather than play with the screen. Though the game design in this type of game is more difficult without the visual elements displayed on the screen. This photo was taken in 2016 when I founded the startup company Sita G Tech at the age of 53 with my eight students. For the past four plus years, we have put in a lot of effort trying to turn the successful research and developments in our research center into real commercial products. That is so much more difficult than building one research prototype. Our primary strategic investor is Seda Chemical Product Company, a foam product company of 40 plus years of experience. As shown in this figure, Seda g -Tech is capable of smart product design. Seda Chemical Product Company provides manufacturing and sales channels of consumer products. The major business model for Seda g -Tech is B2B2C. The Jiren Technology Research Center still maintains its role in R&D and education to provide the basis for both companies. Running this startup company turns out to be the most wonderful thing that happened to my academic career. I think I've become a better Geon Technology designer and a better teacher. Geon Technology needs transdisciplinary talents. The future world needs transdisciplinary talents. People who have passion and exper expertise in multiple fields to solve complex problems, like Da Vinci 500 years ago. That is my expectation to myself and to my students. We are designers, not just mechanical engineers. In the YZUD School, Design School of Jiren Technology, we try to provide students with transdisciplinary learning and real world problems and experience. Design is our common language. What is design? Design starts with a problem, design ends with a solution. Design is a problem-solving process. That concludes my talk. Thank you very much for your attention. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Right, your microphone is muted, HP. Uh, thank you, Prof. Shi, for the insightful sharing. Yeah, uh, I can definitely relate to the Wii game that I played when I was a young kid. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And Prof. Shi is not only a academia, but is also an uh, entrepreneur. Uh, you can see uh, this real life ex uh, example of Prof. Shi converting his research into a real product. This is really admirable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Prof. Shi has also acted as a family technologist. Yeah designing and deploying uh, drone technology and also act as a trigger for his mother, Mother Shi. Uh, I'm sure we all can learn from Prof Shi how to play the role of the family technology, understanding the motivation, uh, ability, and also how to act as a trigger for our elderly parents uh, in our family. Or look for somebody in, in the family who can play this role or someone in the uh, extended family. Uh, thanks again, Prof. Shi, for the insightful sharing. Yeah. Uh, please, uh, we are seeing more questions coming in. Uh, we will address the question at the end of all the presentation. Please continue to post your questions uh, via the chat and the Q&A function. Uh, up next, uh, we have uh, Mr. Samuel Hui. Uh, Samuel will share with us uh, his uh, startup experience uh, and also 
this innovative uh, solution. Yeah, Samuel, yeah, take it over. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, let me share screen here. Um, is the share screen working? Um, yes, it's coming. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, um, uh, I'm Samuel Hoy, the CEO of Automation for Humanity. Uh, with the huge labor and funding gaps, we believe that uh, for aged care, uh, automation is inevitable. So I'm um, just going to give you a brief company history. We were founded in Hong Kong as Human Washer Limited. Uh, in retrospect, that was a terrible, terrible name. Uh, we came up with it based on a Google keyword search, actually, um, searching for, you know, what, what did people search for when they thought about uh, automated bathing? Um, so the original concept was an armchair that transformed into, reclined into automatic bathtub with automatic scrubbing, automatic soaping, uh, you know, reheating of the water. We actually built the prototype and, uh, you know, a simple prototype. Four months later, we actually went to nursing homes to get their opinion on the early prototype and uh, following input, which in uh, mainly involved, uh, uh, you know, listening to their needs um, and, and reconfirming, um, uh, the, the ones we did a big pivot um, in uh, they mentioned that uh, a bathing uh, a, a bathtub type design in many cases um, would in, increase the amount of work that they need to do in terms of um, disinfection and in retrospect especially in this COVID situation then it, it makes um, uh, a huge difference. Uh, 2017 to 2018, we conducted pilot trials on sit and shower both in Hong Kong. We did a bit in uh, Singapore. Some of them were a huge disaster, I would say, and that's a learning process that you know you have to go through. Um, a lot of problems we didn't anticipate. A lot of uh, differences in the users we didn't anticipate. Um, and uh, after a lot of rework uh, in 2019, we officially launched it in shower in Hong Kong. And then in later last year, we launched in Sweden through Neat Nordic and uh, Radiance Medical in Singapore. Radiance has been absolutely fantastic um, in, in terms of helping support because there's a lot of change uh, management involved in, in introducing a new product. Um, I mentioned before, we also changed our name to Automation for Humanity to indicate, um, you know, some of the early research we were doing into automated patient transfer, which I'll, I'll get into a bit further. Uh, this year, we, early this year, we added distributors in the UK and Israel. It's been rather start and stop uh, due to COVID-19. Um, and we've got tentative agreements for Australia and Germany and discussions in US, South Africa, Poland, uh, Canada, Finland, and a few other areas. So uh, there wasn't much talk about uh, Hong Kong uh, age tech uh, startups in the ecosystem. Um, but in, in Hong Kong, right from the start, the focus has to be international. The local market is much too small. There's also unique constraints in, in Hong Kong. If you think the nursing homes in Singapore are small, the, the ones in Hong Kong are much, much more cramped. Um, and if you designed something just for the Hong Kong market, uh, you know, size wise, it's not gonna fit in foreign markets. Um, also physically speaking, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of foreigners are much bigger than the people in Hong Kong. Uh, there's also, and I would say this is similar to many parts of the world, there's a resistance or an ability to change. Uh, a lot of the operators in, in Hong Kong, especially those in the private, um, private sector, uh, a lot of them are, are nearing retirement age. Some of them are seniors themselves. And so uh, there is a reluctance to change. And um, so any work that you do in introducing a new product, uh, change management is, is a huge part. And uh, if you don't have a, a partner or distributor who, who's willing to invest in that, uh, you know, that could be your downfall. That's a, that's a huge lesson we learned early on. Uh, what's really good in Hong Kong is that there's uh, decent opportunities uh, and funding for trade shows, marketing, and international trade. Uh, fundraising in general is, is a bit difficult though. Um, so what are we doing? We're, we're trying to tackle the critical problems in aged care. Uh, there's a few of them. One is unaffordable. Uh, not so much in in uh, Hong Kong. Uh, there is a, it is reasonably more affordable in Hong Kong. But if you look at the West, uh, the U.S. more than seven thousand uh, dollars U.S. per month for semi-private nursing home room costs. Um, in Europe, it's significantly less, but still quite expensive. I don't know how many people can afford that. Um, but even if you can afford it, 
there's a huge shortage in caregivers. Uh, in the UK and England, there's a nursing home closing every week due to a shortage of nurses. And also the current way of, of uh, providing care is uh, actually unsafe. Uh, uh, staff in the US, 12% of nurses leave the profession annually because of back injuries. Um, this is mainly from patient handling. Um, also, COVID-19 has highlighted, uh, you know, spot, uh, shone a spotlight on deaths there. Um, with more than about half the deaths happening in long-term care facilities. Now, this situation is not going to improve. Without automation, population can't support the need for caregivers and costs will only rise. The 2025 old age dependency ratio you see, um, you know, Japan, Germany, France, all these are approaching, uh, you know, dangerous levels of dependency. Uh, you know, most people want to age in place they are not going to because in, at home, uh, any personal care, um, at least at least they're not going to be able to rely on current means. So what are we doing? Uh, our, our company Automation for Humanity, we're aiming to automate all of the activities, each of the activities of daily living, which are the key services provided by uh, long term care. I'm going to show you um, Total success in this would disrupt the long-term care market. We're actually aiming to lower costs by 75%. That's huge. Um, but failing that, uh, partial success in, the, in our near-term projects, bathing, uh, automating bathing, transferring, toileting, would uh, disrupt a $20 billion patient handling market. And we're aiming to have this provided at just uh, a few hundred dollars per month uh, maximum. Um, so here's a, a short concept video. Um, the first is our automated uh, bed to wheelchair transfer system. A person's lifted up, moves sideways to a wheelchair where it retracts, and self-driving wheelchair can go into our sit and shower device. Now we've we've got a proof of concept of that. So if you're interested, uh, please contact me afterwards, and we can discuss it. The sit and shower device is already on the market. Um, again, we launched in Hong Kong, Singapore, Sweden, Israel. Um, you, uh, starting in the UK soon, um, and a few other markets. Um, press one button, automatic soaping, temperature control, um, and you can also disinfect afterwards. Um, so uh, the key difference that we're offering is that caregiver assistance is often not required. It can be voice controlled or um, uh, in the future, but right now we are focused on, on um, just, just using uh, a remote control. Um, as, as I said before, the system, yeah, you know, uh, it can lift you up, move you sideways, put you down, and then it goes into the sit and shower uh, device. Um, McKnight's long-term care magazine also highlighted how dangerous uh, bathing is in, uh, you know, listed as one of the perilous chores during COVID-19, how, how water droplets, um, because people don't wear a mask during bathing can, uh, can uh, affect spread in, in the nursing home facilities. So, um, we're actually late to start this, but some nursing homes have asked us to develop a negative pressure chamber. And so this is uh, something that's coming soon. Um, so they can stand outside, reach in and help, uh, you know, assist the bathing or supervising without any risk. So hold on. Um, so our current status of R&D, SIN shower again, already launched, uh, we're expanding distribution. The automated uh, patient transfer again, feasibly has been demonstrated and we'll pilot in uh, late 2021-22. We also have a research program developed, not started yet uh, for automatic uh, dressing or remote telecontrols, uh, uh, remote robotics for dressing. So the only ADL that we have not started any sort of research on is, is eating. Um, uh, so growth potential is enormous. Uh, you know, we we have started just focused on getting it right. So we sold about 90 units in, in a uh, largely COVID affected launch in Hong Kong, Sweden, Singapore. Uh, Swedish distributors alone projected to go to about 2,500 by 2024. This was pre-COVID uh, estimates. We hope to replicate that start in, in larger markets uh, in to, uh, 2021. Um, these are Australia, US, Germany are all markets where we have discussions with. So we hope to get it to a few thousand uh, and launch our automatic patient transfer device. Just to give you an idea of the potential, um, compared to a market size of the millions, we need to sell only about a few thousand units uh, to give investors a 20x ROI. 
we think we can do that just by uh, replicating without increasing the adoption significantly. Uh, we found nine good patents. Um, they're interlinked, and uh, this is this is something that we we feel is uh, you know very important with any new product. You have to be able to protect it. Um, additional experience from the startup, you're going to make tons of mistakes your first time. We made tons of mistakes and had to pivot. Um, we needed a lot of feedback. Even when we launched, uh, we had a lot of um, questions about it. And you know, you can expect to spend a disproportional amount of time fundraising. We're constantly fundraising and looking for partners. And each market or country is actually very different. And, um, and I'll stop it here. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thanks so much for the insightful sharing, Samuel. Yeah, uh, yeah caring for seniors with ADL difficulties uh, is the most demanding and stressful for caregivers. Uh, unfortunately, many of our seniors with ADL difficulties, they have to stay in a residential nursing home due to the very fact that the caregivers are not able to cope with the high level of stress. Uh, with a Samuel modular solution, uh, this, this solution can reduce significantly the burden of care uh, of our home caregivers and therefore enable our senior to age in place for as long as possible uh, without having to stay in a nursing home. Yeah? Uh, if used in a nursing home, uh, you know, like what Sam, uh, Samuel has mentioned, the target is to reduce the cost by, you know, the operating cost by about 75%. Uh, you know, it can definitely improve the uh, operational efficiency of the nursing home and therefore keeping its fees uh, affordable. Uh, up next, uh, we have uh, Mr. Tan Li Tuan. Uh, uh, Tuan will be sharing with us his startup experience and uh, uh, his uh, innovative solution. Yeah. Tuan? Hi, everyone. Uh, allow me to share my screen. Hi, can you see my screen now? Um, it's coming. It's a black screen, yeah, one? No, it's a white screen. Let me just uh, stop share again. Uh, I, let me try again. Can see now? Uh, no, not yet. Okay. No? No, not yet. Uh, not yet. Okay. Let me just uh, live share. Ah, now, now, I, now we can see. You can see now? Oh, yes, it takes such a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you, SUSS and NLB, for this opportunity to share. Um, I'm Tuan, uh, founder for Be Kind Solution. Uh, we we develop elder care product, and one of the product that we have uh, get some traction is a collection of smart walking stick. So let me just. Uh, Okay, um, it's, it all started with a purpose-driven uh, life. I, I'm a Christian. I read this book uh, written by Pastor Rick Warren on purpose-driven life. And uh, through prayers, I, I know that uh, my calling is to help the elderly. So I started this, uh, this journey. So one of the challenges uh, that I face, uh, this is one of the questions that HP posed to me. <laughs> what are some of the challenges? And one of the main challenges is that um, we know that uh, a lot of people don't want to uh, spend on the elderly. And even the elderly themselves, if they have some saving, they would prefer to spend on their grandchildren instead of on themselves. So developing product and sell to the elderly uh, sometimes can be challenging because they are not willing to spend. Okay, uh, at this junction, I would like to share a short video.
video um, notice that uh, the lady is always winning the competition and uh, one of the main reason is that she's my mother-in-law oh no wonder <laughs> so okay so this is the collection of uh, what you saw just now in the video video clip is actually the older version of the uh, model the newer version is here this uh, the black one uh, you'll be launched next month in hong kong uh, because most of the trade fair here is, is closed and there's a, a bigger fair in, in Hong Kong next month. Uh, so so uh, we'll, we'll launch there. Uh, but this, this uh, collection has got, you notice in the slideshow, um, the one of the challenge here is that we, the, the purpose mm -hmm. is to really impact the uh, most people, that means the common, common folks and not some, uh, some rich people in, in, you know, uh, that earn a lot. So, we try to uh, price it uh, at an affordable uh, range. So this, this range is about 50 to about $120, uh, depending on the, the, the type of handle, the type of function, and the type of material. The more expensive range are mostly made from uh, carbon fiber. And for people who are uh, uh, you know, qualified for the AIC SMF grant, they can actually buy a product uh, like that, about $6, uh, is about this, uh, a meal in a food court. Um, so we, we are fortunate that we have, uh, over the past uh, three years uh, as a startup, we have uh, managed to uh, win a few uh, awards. Uh, the first one is the Elder Care Innovation Award, of which among the finalists are big boys from Germany who innovate on beds, the Dutch who innovate on shower chair, and the Australian who innovate on a grid bar for elderly, but we emerged as a winner. And last year, 2019, we uh, won the Singapore Good Design Award. And this year, we, are, we just uh, we were awarded German Design Award 2020. Um, moving forward, uh, this is one of the uh, projects that we are currently uh, doing like right now. Uh, we're doing a beta test with ADA. It's called Track Assistic. TAS uh, stand for track assisting. It's actually a collaboration with a few partners. Uh, number one is Zero One, is one of the service provider uh, uh, similar to Singtel. Uh, basically, they provide this uh, tracking uh, device. And so we attach this tracking device onto our smart walking stick and uh, so, so that the elderly uh, can, you know, can use our walking stick to take MRT, can take a uh, bus and and also, uh, uh, we also collaborate with SG Assist. Uh, it's a um, it's an app company that that, that uh, pull in all the volunteer, and uh, so we are also uh, Easy Link is also supporting us. So when the LP take uh, bus, the public transport uh, system, uh, they they can actually um, use the walking stick to do the payment gateway. So they can use the stick and and take a bus and. And uh, if they ever get lost and if they still remember where they stay, they can uh, take a taxi back home uh, and pay by their walking stick. And if they can't remember where they stay, they can press a panic button. The, the caregiver will be alert. And uh, if the caregiver is free, they can, you know, through, through the Google map, they can uh, identify where they are and, and pick them up. But on the other hand, if the caregiver is like now having a meeting, and he can actually use the SG Assist app to uh, ask for volunteers to, to help them and to identify the elderly and place them in a, in a safe place. Uh, for example, a control station, a reception area in the shopping mall. So after the caregiver are done with their meeting, they can drive down to the, the location and pick their parents up. So it's, it's a complete solution where, where the elderly uh, can be tracked and uh, can, can use the walking stick in a safe way and in a very convenient way. 
So yeah, so this is basically what I have to share. Thank you. Uh, thanks so much, Tuan. Uh, from a simple existing walking stick, uh, I think Tuan has added many useful features uh, which he has shared. Yeah? And he actually converted it to a fashionable lifestyle device. Yeah? That uh, from the video, you can see that the, uh, the elderly showing off to uh, her peers, yeah? like any one of us. Yeah? Uh, you know, I'm sure Tuan will be coming out with more product, you know, fashionable lifestyle product in the near future. Uh, let's, let, let's keep track of this, yeah. So, uh, thank you so much. We have come to the end of the presentation. Uh, can we have uh, all the speakers to appear in the Zoom screen? Yeah, thanks a lot, Tuan. For, for question and answer? Sure. Okay. That's good, yeah. Uh, so, so this question is uh, actually coming from uh, uh, from uh, for for Miss Ku, yeah. The the question is, you know, how many you know startup has actually Jetro supported uh, in ninety uh, in twenty nineteen and in what era? That, that's the first question for Miss Ku, yeah. Hello. Um, I do not have the exact numbers uh, on hand. And um, actually, Jetro do not only support startups. So we actually support startups in all different sectors. So it's difficult actually to say that wh which sector is the best. But mm -hmm. uh, definitely, we could see the increase in, in, of course, in IT area, IoT areas, and also medical uh, care area, mm -hmm. especially since the COVID situation, um, a lot of uh, demand has been actually focusing on things that could apply for the work from home or the medical uh, areas, medical care areas that is related to this particular sector. Yep, yep thanks, Ms. Ku. Yeah. Uh, just to continue with the question, uh, you know, uh, uh, this question is for Samuel Tuan and Professor Shi. Uh, having gone through the startup process, what are the advice that you would give to a potential startup uh, to be successful? Uh, this is in view of, you know, because startup is typically quite a small company, you know, uh, and how can startup compete with a bigger company, you know, a, a big multinational company, uh, and also, you know, uh, uh, especially on the privacy side, how can the consumer trust the startup in terms of the personal data, the, the privacy, yeah? Yeah, for one thing, I think during technology is very special in that um, during technology, again, during technology is, is not just about technology. So the, the, the huge big company may not have the advantage. Uh, mm -hmm. it, if we can focus on um, uh, a specific uh, area, specific group, and really develop our own expertise in that, in, in that group, and uh, I think uh, startup companies just to have have good opportunities in this market. Uh, after all, this is a new market, and the, the the big company do not have the you know the the quickness to 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 adapt themselves into this uh, into this new market. And in terms of uh, you, you mentioned about data privacy, data privacy is always always an issue. So for one thing, we never develop any products that has, um, you know, that use camera. We never want to use camera to pre prevent this uh, privacy issue. And also, also we try to, you know, we try not to own the data. The data should be owned by the nursing, nursing home, by the hospital and by the home user. We don't want to own those data. A lot of people tell us that, that data will be, you know, very useful, very valuable, but we try not Indeed. to own, own those data. Yeah. Okay. Thanks a lot, Prof. Shi. Uh, Samuel, can we have your view? Um, well, there's 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 a number of uh, of things. Definitely, as a startup, you have to build credibility. And uh, I know uh, Kelvin mentioned, uh, you know, a lot of you know accelerator programs. They do help mm -hmm. add credibility um, on the privacy issue of data. It is always a concern, um, but. I, I don't think in many cases, depending on your business model, you can avoid it. And so thus, um, you know, getting that credibility 
from um, some of those accelerator programs, getting some expert, you're going to have to to get partners for that. Um, you know, privacy is something definitely you don't want to handle completely on your own as a startup. Um, so, you know, at, at that point, you just can't be, you can't be proud. You got to ask for help. <laughs> you know, and I think that's one of the key things. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Juan, any comment? Uh, I think there is two questions to the, this. Uh, uh, the, the first question is about uh, what, what advice and the second part is about yes. privacy. Uh, mm -hmm. The first question is about, uh, I would say it's a general answer, is about um, if money is not a concern, what do you really want to impact? I think that is the key fundamental mm -hmm. question you need to ask. Because uh, as any startup, it's going to be very tough in, in terms of, uh, it, it, because it's a real business and there's a, many issues on a daily basis, there's many mm -hmm. issues and there's always time where you think, hey, why am I doing this? Well, what is it for? There's always, there's always this time where it's too tough and you, you need to answer mm -hmm. yourself and you have to answer your core question, why are you doing that? I think that is fundamental. So separately, coming back to the second question about privacy, I would say that um, it's best to partner with someone who knows how to do that. Uh, because your call is not about privacy, that is really a specialized area. Partner with someone who can outsource that part and, and it'll be easier. Uh, so so that, that gives you some credibility. Thanks so much. Yeah. Uh, uh, this question is uh, for uh, Prof. Tan, uh, Professor Shi, uh, Dr. Tan, and also Ms. Ku. Uh, uh, what do you think are the key challenges of seniors and caregivers uh, in adopting Geron technology and what should be done to increase the acceptance rate? So should I answer first? Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 well, it, I always tell people that um, it's the behavior. We are designing the behavior. We are not designing te technological functions. A lot of people are thinking of designing technological function and thinking we have this great function and uh, people will use them. No, no, th this is not happening. So if you design a function and that 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 is not familiar with the, the, the older adults, the older adults never had those behaviors, your product will not be used. I think that, that well, people have been talking about acceptance, but um, I think it's the designer's responsibilities. When we talk about acceptance, we say, hey, older adults do not, do not have uh, technology, technology acceptance. It's like their responsibility. No, it's our responsibility. We should be able to design the behavior so the, the older adults will have that behavior. They are familiar with this behavior and they will use, it, use their products. So, so they will use their, your, your product not because of the function, it's because of the behavior. So that's, 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 my answer to acceptance. Thanks, Dr. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Tan? Yeah, I can add on. To, uh, I yes. think uh, one of the key research uh, I did recently um, mm -hmm. is to, to make sure that uh, we uh, do some assessment of uh, understanding what the mm -hmm. market needs. And this is, we, you know, this is really resonating with what uh, Prof. Shi mentioned. Um, the technology acceptance really is a key part of a successful product. Um, you could have the best bells and whistles uh, in your product, but then uh, you missed out uh, the basic needs uh, of understanding uh, what it takes for a senior to accept a technology, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, it's not consumer product. It's not about the, the you know, the, the way how cool it is, uh, but it's about how useful it is, right? So this whole thing about person-centered, yes. Uh, product and person-centered approach uh, requires a bit more depth uh, to it if you want to get a seniors, uh, you know, gerontology product. Yeah, so that's why some product, some companies are startups are really struggling because, you know, they they adopt the same consumerism approach yes. uh, towards a, a niche uh, kind of uh, you know demographic, and mm -hmm. uh, those are the wrong recipes uh, for for successful you know entry. Uh, and I also want to add that in Singapore, our market is really very small. You can talk about, yes. you know, the, the silver tsunami and all this, but we are just a very small market. So the other thing is to work with partners, right? Uh, to scale out your product so that you reach a point where the price, the cost is affordable enough, and then you can mm -hmm. fight the market. Thank you. 
Thanks, Dr. Tan. Uh, Ms. Ku, any comment from your side? Okay, um, I truly agree with what uh, Professor Shi and uh, Dr. Tan has mentioned in Japan. It's, uh, it's a very uh, a nation with a very unique culture. So companies mm -hmm. who are really thinking in, in this uh, going into the market, they really have to understand what is the needs of what the elderly are looking at and also what are their living conditions. And it also diversify from the cities area and the remote areas as well. So you need to have very deep study about uh, what is happening in Japan in that particular uh, area. And also, as what the others has mentioned too, because of the localization of the, the product is definitely necessary. Uh, working with a partner is definitely a good idea to do so, to enter the, the market. Thank you so much.